Hey, John. Okay, while we wait for the uh, Villanova contingent, uh, just some quick uh, reminders and some updates. Uh, first, we ask that you please check uh, your cell phones and other devices, uh, set them to silent mode if you would. I will do the same with mine. Uh, if we would also please refrain from uh, flash photography in this room and also refrain from shooting video of any kind, um, including from mobile devices. All video must be captured in the video distribution area next door. Uh, the satellite coordinates for this uh, session and all sessions tonight uh, that is on Galaxy 17 slash 17K, slot C, uh, frequency number 12044.5H. Okay, we welcome uh, Villanova head coach Jay Wright, uh, junior Jalen Brunson, and freshman Amari Spellman. Uh, coach, if we would get your thoughts on the game for an opening statement, please. Uh, what a game, man. What a college basketball game. I, I hope that looked as good as it, as it did from the bench, man. Just all the credit in the world to West Virginia. That was the most physical, physically demanding, mentally demanding 40 minutes We've played in a long time. Um, they just, they're so relentless. They keep coming at you. Um, and because of that, because of how good West Virginia is, how well coached they are in the half court offense, they don't give credit for that. Their press is great, but their half court offense and their offensive rebounding is strategic. They've always got three guys, two blocks and, and in the middle of the lane. It's, it's really intelligent basketball. Because of that, I'm just so proud of our guys, the leadership, um, Jalen Brunson, Mikhail Bridges and Phil Booth, our three leaders, just when we got down six, I could just see they pulled everybody together and uh, it just kept us together to grind it out. So great win for us because West Virginia is so good. Okay, we'll take questions for coaching the student athletes. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone too. If you add as a courtesy to the guest at the podium, please introduce yourself before the question. Uh, we'll start here in front with Dick. Uh, Hoops. <laughs> Hoops is in the house. It's official. Uh, to, for, for Jay and the players, can we talk, talk a little bit about Amari Spellman and the scripts that he has? Go ahead, Jay. You can hear. To be honest, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, um, after the game, um, Ali LaForest asked me, um, how did you think, feel Amari played? And I just said, I, that's just, that's used, that's, we're used to that. I mean, Amari can shoot, he can make plays, he can do all that. He can play, he's a great defender. So um, it's nothing that we're no, not already used to. I mean, I mean, we expect that of him. He's supposed to play at a high level every game. And so, I mean, for him to play like that, I mean, it's, it's great for him, how consistently he's been doing it. So, I mean, it, when he makes shots, it's, it's, it's not special to us. It, we're thankful for it, though. Thank, very thankful. Over here to the right, please. Mike Petralia, uh, CLNS Media here in Boston. Amari, what was it about your looks that caused you to get the shots right up without hesitation? 
coach always tells me to catch the shoot, and um, we were just looking to come out and run offensive score. And um, I was just having to shoot them up, sleep in the streets mentality, and I was just trying to take the right shots and be aggressive. You can go in front and hear to Julian, please. And then Jalen, that bucket was your and one. Um, can you just describe sort of the mentality you had, sort of sizing up the rim, finding the lane, and getting the contact, finishing at the rim, and then what that means for you and to go forward? You do that first. Um, yeah. It's just, it's just um, our, our confidence to have in each other. Um, I mean, my teammates have confidence in me to make plays like that. Um, I just try, you know, get low, you know, be aggressive, and uh, just really concentrate on uh, making a basket. And um, I mean. It's something that I work on, and it's something that my teammates and coaches have comments to me doing. Yeah, and you've got to give it. Kanate is one of the best rim protectors I've seen in college basketball in a long time. You know, <clears throat> I was assistant in the Big East when Matumbo and Morning were at Georgetown, I mean, but I mean, you saw uh, Eric. I mean, Pasc um, Cal Bridges is one of the best athletes around. He took it at him, couldn't finish. It's, the kid's impressive, man. The kid is really tough. He's young. It's hard, but we had to keep going. Phil Booth got a shot blocked going to the rim, and then the next play he drove it and found Omari for a three. So just had to keep going at the rim and making good decisions. Go to Adam, please. Adam Sigori, uh, Jalen, how much did you take that rivalry with Javon? You know, how much were you looking forward to playing him, and how much did you kind of step up your game knowing you're going against Javon in their backcourt? And what did you think of uh, Eric's dunk there? Um, I try and approach every game like it's my last every game. So um, there's no extra incentive when I'm playing someone I've, I've known growing up. I mean, it's, if I need to be motivated by that, and then I'm doing myself a disjust, uh, injustice. So I got I to gotta play every game like it's my last. I mean, I love playing against old friends. Um, I mean, I love great challenges. But it was, it was Villanova versus West Virginia tonight. And it, it was a great battle fought between two good teams. And um, that was great. And uh, Eric Stunk, that's just... It's honestly something that we're, we're used to seeing. We've seen some crazier ones in practice, but uh, I mean, we're, just, we, we're happy we have him. Uh, back to the left, please. Mike Abelson, New Hampshire Union leader. First, uh, Jalen, uh, you know, you play against guys like Javon, you play against a great backcourt, no matter who it is on Sunday. What's your philosophy of playing your position against high caliber opposition like you are this weekend? And then, Jay, what do you, you know, expect out of this team coming up Sunday, no matter who you're playing, two very different teams. Go ahead, Jay. I think the deeper we go, the better the teams are going to going to get. Um, but most importantly for us, nothing changes. Uh, nothing changes no matter who we play, no matter where we play, what time, what day, it doesn't matter. It, nothing changes for us. We play every game like the last. You know, sticking to our core values, you know, 40 minutes of Villanova basketball, I mean, that's, that's our minds at every game. As long as we're sticking together for those 40 minutes or more, uh, that's all we can pray for. That's all we want to do. Go down here in front, please. No, I, and I just want to answer this question. I'm, I'm looking at minute. I'm looking at minutes here. You know, we, we had a lot of guys play a lot of a lot of minutes in a f physical game. We we got to make sure we're fresh because these two these two teams are both physical teams also. So, my biggest concern is just being fresh for either one of these teams, physically, mentally. Bob Groats, Delaware County Daily Times. Omari, it it was pretty rough with uh, you and Kamante in the second half. What and that one point where they uh, where play was stopped? What were you guys talking about? Were you just kind of introducing yourself, saying hello, or? Uh, it was it was just two guys um, competing, and, and that's that's really all it was. Um, he's a great player, and um, it was it was definitely a challenge to go up against him, and we were just um, competing at the highest level, and, and that's really all it was. Go over here to the right. Owen Hughes, City Basketball Love. Jay, some, some in the past kind of teams with that size and physicality have given you some problems. What was the difference today? I think Omari and, um, you know, Eric Pascal and, and uh, Mikhail, you know, and our guards have good size. You know, Phil Booth and Dante DiVincenzo. Don, Phil Booth had six defensive rebounds. Dante DiVincenzo had five defensive rebounds against West Virginia, who is – 
the best offensive rebounding team we've played against, you, you got to have five guys rebounding, so it can't just be your bigs. But I thought Dante um, Omari kind of um, neutralized Kanate and allowed Booth and, and Dante to go get some rebounds. Okay, go over here on the left. It's going to be more of a complex. Coach, uh, numbers aside, what would you say? why would you say this is such a big moment to see these guys win this game? Just because I, I, I have so much respect for the way West Virginia plays, how, how physical, how relentless they play, um, how mentally tough they are. I mean, really, you got guys that they don't they don't talk any junk. You know, we got a little Kanate and he, he Omar got into a little bit no beat, but the whole game they don't say anything. They just come at you physically, aggressively, and mentally tough. So if you're not better in those areas, they're going to get you. And to see our guys come out more, to be able to compete with them physically and mentally, it was really um, impressive to me. Go over here on the right. Stephen Plover on Black Sports Online. Uh, this is for Jalen Amari. In a game where you guys both play 35 plus minutes, and it's a tough grind out game, how much of the crowd factor, and they really seem to kind of be on your side for the majority of the night? Uh, they're great. Our Northern Nation's great. Uh, to be honest, it, it doesn't really affect us at all. Uh, we try to focus on 94 by 50 feet. Every time we step between those lines, it's all about what's going on inside those lines. You know, um, I mean, our fans are great. I mean, we love them. I mean, we want them to support us every every time we, we can. But um, it's all about us doing what we do inside those lines. Over here to Pete. Uh, one for Jay and uh, one for Amari. Pete Thamel from uh, Yahoo. Amari, could you walk through that sequence where you uh, block Beetle on one end and then charge back and push back the dunk on the other. They kind of swung the tenor of the game after Mikhail hit the three. And, and Jay, after you go through a game like this, are, are you grateful for the experience because you need to win games like this in the tournament? Go ahead, Al. Um, well, on the block, I just saw him put his head down. And um, I forget who he was going at, but he had him chested pretty well. And I just saw the opportunity for the block. Um, I came over, got the rebound, and tried to outlet it. And I saw Phil going to the hoop. And I was just thinking to myself, if he misses this, I got to get it. So um, it just happened to come off the right way, and I just tried to finish it. We have time for a couple more. We'll go in the back. And just, just to answer Pete's question, it, 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 you know, in this tournament, to be down six against a team like that and, and in the second half and battle back, um, you, you know in the next game that's going to happen. So you don't, you don't want it to happen the first time in, you know, in, a, in a final eight game. So uh, – and, and just the, the physicality, the – the toughness of that team. That's what a final eight game is going to be like. I, I think that's a really valuable game for us, really valuable. In the back to the left. Uh, Sean Devaney with Sporting News. Uh, it seemed like the second half you're, you're handling the press better, but you missed nine out of your first ten shots. So is that just, you know, you're, you're beating the press, but you're not running your offense once you do it, or, or you're just missing shots? I, I think early in the first half it was the opposite. You know, we – we weren't doing a great job with the press, but we were making some shots. Second half, I think we got used to the physicality. We got used to the aggressiveness, and we were executing better. I, we, we thought that was going to be the case. You, you just can't simulate that. You know, you got to just get in that game and feel it. Um, but I thought we were more aggressive in the second half. We got to the foul line. We missed shots, but we got to the foul line. And I thought that was important for us early in the second half. Counter in front, please. Uh, Bob Ford from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Jay, uh, you like to talk a lot about the old Big East. We're in an old Big East city against an old Big East opponent, and that was an old Big East game. And it might not be that the new Big East has that same level of physicality top to bottom. You know, it's a little more of an up and down pace yeah. game. Uh, but as you said, this is going to prepare you for what's to come. Did you have that sort of deja vu about this game as you were as you were in it? Definitely. Um, as soon as I started watching film of West Virginia, I just thought, man, this the, – the Big East is a – the new Big East is a really high-powered offensive league, a lot of three-point shooters, and it, it's, it is different from the old Big East. And I think college basketball has changed a lot, too. There aren't a lot of teams that play this way. I, you know, we played, we played Tennessee. I thought it was a physical team, but not like this. So when, when, when I started watching film, I just thought, man, this, this is a tough matchup, number one. And if we survive this, we're a pretty mentally tough team. And, it, and this is going to be like an old school grind out game. And, um, but it's funny how the game has changed. It's old school grind out, but it's, it's 90, 78. That would have been 58, 
you know, 50 back in the day. Go here to John, please. And no fouls called. <laughs> there were fouls called in this game. Yes, there were. Uh, Jay, I'm the guy sitting next to Hoops. Um, <laughs> can, can you talk a little bit about, uh, given that we're in polite company, what you said when, after you called the timeout at 60-54? Because that was a moment when it could have gone either way. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah, I was all right. I, I really was. Um, I knew there was a lot of time. I knew with them, that, you know, the way they play, there's going to be a lot of possessions. Um, like we were talking about earlier, I thought we were doing some good things. We were just missing shots. They hit a couple tough shots. Um, it was. It really wasn't that. It wasn't that. Um, it wasn't that bad. It was kind of just. It was right before the. I think the 12 minute timeout, and and I wish we don't usually like to do, and. I just thought it was really, we just thought it was really necessary at that time because they were getting on a good run, and I just just wanted to make sure we kept our confidence and we and we we stayed committed to our game plan. And that's right, our leadership. You know, I just look at Jalen McHale and Phil. I could just see in their eyes we were good. We were good. If I if I didn't, if I looked in their eyes and saw fear or worry, I, I would have maybe went a little crazy. But I, I didn't. I'll take a final question over here. Mike Gableson, New Hampshire Union leader again. First for Jalen, then for Coach. Um, Purdue hasn't been to an, an Elite Eight in almost 20 years. Texas Tech's never been there. Jalen, you have national championship game experience. And Jay, of course, you're still coaching the team. What can um, what can guys like you and Mikhail provide to the younger guys practicing tomorrow and playing in a game that Purdue and Texas Tech haven't? And then for Jay, what does the experience of two years ago give you as a coach going into Sunday? I'm sorry, could you say that one? One more time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you and you and Mikhail both played a role in the national title team. Mm -hmm. Tech and Purdue haven't been to an elite eight in at least twenty years or ever. What does your experience in the past couple of years? How is, is that going to be able to help preparing this team going into Sunday? And then for Jay <laughs> being able to coach that team. Um, I think um, I think our experience is definitely going to be able to help. Um, just being able to go through what we did a couple years ago and last year, you know, it shows us uh, you know, the highs and lows of college basketball. But um, I just think it comes from us thinking it's, it's, it's our next game. Our next game is our biggest game. No, nothing changes no matter, like I said, who we play, where we play, what type of game it is. It, nothing changes for us. We want to go out there and you know, stick to our core values for 40 minutes. And um, I think we really got to take pride in that and uh, really just stick to what we do and just not worry about anything else. I always say he's the most mature guy in our program. I probably can't come up with a better answer than that. But it, it, it's the truth. When, you, when you're in it, you learn that Everything's going on around you, but really what your experience is just the next game. And you love that more than, you know, we've all been fans of this and watched it, and it's great, but there's nothing like being in it and having that next game. I, I think we all kind of understand that. And Texas Tech and Purdue are going to know it. As soon as this game's over, they're going to know it. The most important thing is this is just the next game. Well, no, but congratulations. And thank, thank you very much, thank guys. You. Thank you. For West Virginia, we're joined by head coach Bob Huggins, senior Javon Carter, senior Daxter Miles Jr. Uh, we'll go right to questions for a coach and the student athletes. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you and introduce yourself if you would for the benefit of the guests at the podium. Over here on the left, please. Kevin Kinder, Blue and Gold News. For Javon and Dax, can you both describe what Bob Huggins has meant to you? 
Um, for me, it's been everything. Um, he um he just gave me a chance. Um, small guy from Maywood, Illinois. You know, didn't have a lot of looks. Um, He just saw something in me that um, a lot of people didn't. Dexter, can we get your thoughts as well? Uh, first off, I want to say uh, thank you to Coach Hugs for giving me the opportunity to play for West Virginia. And thank you to the state for showing us just just being great in my four years. And um, thank you to my teammates uh, for staying down and uh, working hard. And um, Coach Hugs, man, he gave me the opportunity, like I said, um, That's all I gotta say. He's a great coach, man. Great person off the court. And it's been fun. I wish we would have kept going. But I enjoyed every moment. Other questions? John? Bob, they call timeout with 11.04 or something. You're up six, you're on a run. And then they go on the 11 0 run and basically turn the game around. Was there something specific that changed at that point in their play or in your play? Well, they miss a free throw and we don't block out. And they, they get the ball back and hit a three. So it goes from, from six to two in a hurry. Um, we, we had shots, John. We didn't make them. They made open shots. We didn't make open shots. I mean, I. These guys can tell you. I, I start telling guys at the beginning of the year, man, at this time of year, if you want to win in March, you have to make open shots. They made open shots. We didn't. We got way more shots than they got. We just didn't make them. Uh, say what you want. We, we've been, we were, we came into the tournament shooting almost 77% from the free throw line. We didn't make free throws. You know, those, those things come back and bite you. You know, you got to, you got to continue to do fundamental things, and you, when you have open shots, this time of year, and the further you go in the tournament, there's less and less open shots. So when you get one, you have to make it. They did, we didn't. Mitch, you have a mic. Mitch, they go from Charleston. Is that now? I noticed you waved to the fans as you were going off the court. Can you talk about your relationship with them, what it's meant to you? in your four years. And the coach, if you could talk about a little bit about both these guys and what they meant to your program. Um, they came out and supported from day one since I've been here. Um, they've always believed in me. Um, I don't know. They just mountaineer, mountaineer nation, man. Um, they do an un unbelievable job. They travel. Thousands of miles to come see us play, and I do my best to go out there and play hard and give them a good show to watch. And Coach, you get your thoughts as well. Well, these two guys have been as as good of players as they are, and they're they're very good players. They're going to go down as uh, probably um, well, not probably the best four-year backcourt in the history of West Virginia basketball, and that's saying a lot. He's, um, but what they do off the floor, they're both, they're both really good students. They're, they're both going to graduate on time. When, and we get a lot of requests you know, from, from people, whether someone was in an auto accident, somebody's got cancer or whatever, and you know, you, you you say, you know, could we need some volunteers to go to the hospital. These are the first two guys that put their hands up. Um, they, they do everything right. And it's, uh, they came in, Mitch, you know, we were, we were struggling. You know, we were struggling. I think the, I didn't, I underestimated the switch from the Big East and how they played in the Big East to the Big 12. And we had the wrong kind of guys. And, and these guys came in, and, and, and we had guys that really, you know, didn't love to play. 
and we made a conscious effort to recruit guys who really love to play. And these two guys are, I mean, they're at the head of that class now. I mean, they, they work. They work. They work every day in practice. They're coachable. Um, I've never had one complaint about either one of them. I've never had one issue with either one of them. They're great people. Over here. Javon, win or loss, can you talk about what it's been like playing on this stage of the NCAA tournament? Um, this is everything. Um, everybody's in tune with Martin Madness. Um, I feel like it's bigger than the NBA playoffs. You know, um, every game's on TV. Everybody's everybody's talking about March. Um, anything can happen in March. A lot of it's, it's always upsets. Um, games going down to the wire. Um, it's just a great atmosphere to play in. Um, fortunately, we lost in the Sweet 16, but I feel like we gave it everything we had. We just didn't didn't make shots tonight. Villanova did. You know. Good luck to them in the future. Time for a couple more. Back here. Kevin Kendra, Blue and Gold News. Coach, did the foul trouble that your team got into in the second half affect the way that you wanted to play or anything that you wanted to do? Sure. Absolutely did. It. Um, Trying to, I'm trying to say the right things. Um, it, yeah, it does. I mean, when you when when the whistle keeps blowing, it it really takes away your aggression, you know. And and then you know, JC had three, Dax had four. They're they're the heart and soul of, of of this team. They're they're the guys that everybody looks to. They're the guys that. Um, they're they're the guys who make things happen. I've never had anybody, and I've had great players. I've been very blessed. I've never had anybody work the way this guy here works. Never have anybody put the time in that he's put in. And and you know, he deserves he deserves a better a better ending. I think. Any final questions? West Virginia, thank you. Congratulations on an excellent season. Thanks.